Hey everybody, this is Tristan with Appalachian Memory Keepers, and today we're here in Grayson County, Virginia, exploring the story of one family buried here at the Hall Orchard Cemetery. There are about 600 people buried at Hall Orchard Cemetery, but before it was a cemetery, this land was farmland, owned appropriately enough by a family called Farmer. Now this land has certainly changed a lot over the years, but two things have remained consistent for almost a century a cemetery, and a log cabin. One member of the Farmer family, John O. Johnson Coonrod Wilson Farmer, who's buried here, and his wife, Susan Wyatt Farmer, they were among the first people to be buried here. We don't know if they were the very first buried here, as the records show that they died before 1897. We don't know any more specifics than that. Coonrod and Susan had seven children, Two of their sons fought for the Confederacy in the Civil War. Their son Noah survived the war and lived to the age of 90. However, Private E. Calloway Farmer wasn't so lucky. He was killed at the Battle of Bristow Station, Virginia. It was a bad defeat for the Confederates, and General Lee ordered the numerous dead be buried at the battle site. This is likely where Calloway was laid to rest. Four years after Calloway's death, his widow Betty married his younger brother, John Wilson Farmer. Betty is buried with an unusual marker, this metal T that says only Bet Farmer. Now let's focus for a moment on Coonrod and Susan's daughter, Charity Ann. She would marry John Calvin Ingram, and after he returned home from the Civil War, they built a log cabin on the land just past this church. Now together, they would raise seven children, and they would live in that cabin until they passed, but a cabin would remain in the family. John and Charity Ann's daughter, Vernie Olanta, or Lanty Ingram, would marry a man named Isom Sturgill. Coincidentally, Lanty and Isom were both born on the same day, March 9, 1887. Meanwhile, another daughter, Ella, married James Estel Sturgill, Isom's brother. Ella and Estel had six children, two of whom died during childhood. Their graves are marked in a slightly unusual way. We have a single headstone labeled Sturgill. Then we have two footstones, one for Estel and one for Ella. And directly below those footstones, we have a stone for their infant son and for their six-year-old son, Ernest. John and Charity Ann would have a daughter named Darthula. She would marry Enoch Osborne and together they would have 14 children, including two sets of twins. Interestingly, Enoch and Darthula are buried separately. Enoch is buried behind me with this simple marked field stone. It reads E.C. Osborne in all caps. The N in Osborne is made backwards and the text extends all the way to the edge of the stone. Meanwhile, Darthula is buried here with a more modern stone that notes her dates of birth and death. But now let's add one more family name to the mix, the Spencers. See, Isaac Spencer Jr. and his wife Phoebe had nine children. One child, John Calvin Spencer, had a son named William Isaac Spencer. And William Isaac would marry Ida Ingram, daughter of our old friends, John and Charity Ann Ingram. Now, John Calvin Spencer had another son, Adolphus. Adolphus and his wife, Urbani, gave birth to Hester Spencer. Remember that name, Hester Spencer. We'll come back to that in a minute. Isaac and Phoebe's other sons, William and Troy, both fought in the Civil War for the Confederacy. When they received word that their family was starving back home, both brothers deserted and came back home to get the crops in and make sure their parents had food. After finishing their work at home, William and Troy returned to their units where they would both face court-martial. They were both sentenced to execution by firing squad, but William's sentence was commuted by General Hood due to his excellent character and gallantry displayed in the late battle. Troy was set to be executed, but the soldiers selected to act as the firing squad all made an agreement to fire above Troy's head. One of the men named Widener did not keep the agreement and shot Troy, killing him. William took a lock of Troy's hair home to his mother, who kept that lock in her apron at all times. 
When the war was over, Isaac told Phoebe that he had to be gone for a while and he might not return. There was something he had to do. After Isaac returned, the Widener man was never heard from again. William would name his first son William Troy Spencer, who everyone called by the nickname Bud. Bud Spencer would marry Enoch Osborne's sister, Cynthia Alice. Bud and Alice's son, William Glenn Spencer, married Hester Spencer. Yes, Hester and Glenn shared great-grandparents in Isaac and Phoebe Spencer. And though some may raise an eyebrow at this today, it was not that uncommon back then, especially in the more isolated rural areas where almost everyone had some family connection. Remember the log cabin that Coonrod and Susan built in the early 1900s? Well, Glenn and Hester would move into that cabin in 1936, and they would live there until they passed, Glenn in 1976 and Hester in 1990. As you can see, the cabin is no longer standing where it was originally built, but it wasn't dismantled or worn down by time. In fact, it was taken over by Grayson Highlands State Park, uh, the park had reached an agreement that Hester would live out the rest of her life in the cabin and then the park would take control of the cabin and the land it was sitting on. Now the park had other plans for that particular piece of land, but instead of dismantling the cabin, they actually moved it to another piece of park property. And in fact, when you visit Grayson Highland State Park, you can actually visit what is now known as the Spencer Cabin. I hope you've enjoyed taking this trip through history with us here at the Hall Orchard Cemetery. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you get all our latest videos. And for everybody here at Appalachian Memory Keepers, have a great day.